Is this Kemp's cafe? We're closed. Is this Kemp's cafe? I told you we're closed. It's half past eleven. I don't want to eat. What do you come for then? Have you got any letters for me? Shut that door and come in. Did you say letters? Yes. What are you talking about? My name happens to be Val Girth. I was sitting on a seat on the embankment. I dozed off to sleep. And when I woke up, this envelope was lying at my feet. Well? It's addressed to me, care of your cafe. I've never heard of this place before, but I thought I'd better come and find out. Let's have a look. Is that your name? Percival St. John Wicks Girth? St. John Wicks Girth. What a mouthful. Well, at least there aren't likely to be two of us. You said it. Can't see two mothers saddling a brat with that lot. I want to know about this envelope. It's been opened. Who did you give it to? I see you take the long road. Oh, I don't know what you're talking about. What was in this envelope? Wait a minute. How do I know you are, Mr. Percival Singen Wicks Girth? At the moment, you'll have to take my tailor's word for it. Hmm? Well, why come all the way down here? Because of an envelope. Ever heard of a drowning man clutching at a straw? Who's drowning? You can drown without going near water. All right, I believe you. Some wouldn't. Name a lug, myself. Pleased to meet you. I've got another letter for you somewhere. Been here some days. Why did you let the postman leave it? Oh, people use this address. I never inquire. Here you are. Hello. Couple of pound notes. Well, that's a good start. Who on earth? I say, have you ever heard of a man called Albert Campion? Campion? Sounds familiar, Summer. Well, I think he must be a bit mad. Listen to this. Mr. Albert Campion, at home, any evening after 12. Improving conversation, beer, light wines, and little pink cakes. 17 Bottle Street, Piccadilly. Little pink cakes. And there's a note at the bottom saying, it's urgent, take care. <sighs> How far is Piccadilly from here? A good three miles. If you're going, you're better off it. All right. Good night, and thanks a lot. You're welcome. Taxi, sir. Taxi. Oh, that's a stroke of luck this time of night. 17 Bottle Street, Piccadilly. Right, sir. Albert Campion, improving conversation, little pink cakes. I don't know. Well, I have nothing to lose, I suppose. Hi, driver, this isn't the way to the West End. Didn't you see the sign? Oh, damn it, I can't open this partition. Driver, where are you going? What did that note say? Take care. This taxi was a plant. What the hell? Driver, you drunk or something? I'll take off my shoe and smash your glass. Driver! All right, you asked for it. Look out, you're going straight to that lamppost. Look out! Driver, are you all right? Knocked out, eh? Well, I'm sorry I can't wait till you come round. You shouldn't try to shanghai people. Here! What do you think you're doing? Waking people up, eh? Why don't you learn to drive? Coming down here in the middle of the night, knocking down our lampposts? They don't want to be alive. Mr. Campion? Ah, Mr. Girth, I'm sure. I was expecting you. Do come in. Dear me, that's a very nasty bump on your forehead. What's happened to you? A taxi driver tried to kidnap me, but never mind that. What's all this about? I shall be happy to explain. What about a drink first, though? Uh, brandy and soda? Just the thing after a skirmish. Thank you. Well, sit yourself down. I'm sorry the flat's a bit untidy. We've been having an after-theatre party, hence the dinner jacket. <laughs> nice to get into one. 
Ah, now then, drink that. You'll feel better. Thanks. Oh. <coughs> My hat, that was a strong one. I never believe in half measures. So it seems. Now, Mr. Campion, please be good enough to explain who are you and what is going on. Well, to take the first question first, my name you know. I could be described as an ex-professional private detective. I used to do it for a living. And then, when an uncle of mine, who was a bishop, left me a limited but satisfactory legacy, I continued to do it, just for the fun of the thing, when any situation or anybody intrigues me. What on earth could possibly be intriguing about me? I see you take the long road, Mr. Girth. That's what the man at Kemp's Cafe said. What's it mean? <laughs> I'm afraid I owe you an apology, Mr. Girth. But as you discovered on your way here, I'm not the only person interested in you. Hence this rather indirect method of approach. <sighs> You're still talking in riddles. Well, first of all, let me ask you. Have you seen last week's edition of Society Illustrated? No, I have not. Then you didn't see the photograph of your aunt, Lady Pethick. Aunt Diana? What's she been up to? She has had a picture taken holding your famous family relic, the Girth Chalice. Photographed holding the chalice? I don't believe it. Well, look for yourself. Oh, this is monstrous. I was afraid you might think it in rather bad taste. Bad taste? This is sacrilege. Oh, you don't understand. The Girth Chalice is something beyond price. It's been with our family since before the conquest. We guard it for the crown. It's the reason for our existence. I know that. Father must be mad letting her do this. Oh, I see why you've brought me here. You're doing this for father. I ought to go home. You're right. I'm not acting for your father. Then why? Will you listen? Go on. Some years ago, certain people formed a very exclusive club, the Societe Anonyme. It has only about half a dozen members, and they all have two things in common. They're among the wealthiest men in the world, and since they can buy almost anything, the only things that really interest them are the things they can't buy. Such as? Oh, the Venus de Milo, things that aren't for sale. Who are these people? Well, I know about half of them. The trouble is they're very, very important. That embarrasses the international police. And in any case, they never come out into the open. They work through an agent. And if anything goes wrong, the agent takes the blame. Am I supposed to believe all this? Well, I don't know whether you remember, but the Mona Lisa disappeared on one occasion and turned up again in rather odd circumstances. The same things happened several times. And where does this agent come in? He sets up as a fence and lets it be known in the right quarter that he's prepared to pay a fabulous sum for the article indicated. Now perhaps you see why people are interested in you. You don't mean they're after the chalice. Of course they are. <sighs> You're crazy. Now listen, Val Girth. You've got to believe me. I'm not nearly so ignorant of the position that the Girth chalice holds in your family and in the country as you imagine. By warning you, I am placing myself at direct variance with one of the most powerful organizations in the world. By offering you my assistance, I'm endangering my life. But... Would you like me to tell you of the ceremony connected with the chalice? of the visits of the Queen's Chamberlain every ten years, which have taken place regularly ever since the Restoration, or of the deed by which your entire family possessions are forfeit to the Crown, should the chalice be lost? But how did you know? There's a great deal more I could tell you. According to your family custom, you come of age on your 25th birthday, when there is a ceremony in the East Wing of the Tower. You'll have to go to Sanctuary for that. Um. Another brandy? No, thanks. Oh. I still don't get this business of my picking up an envelope. Well, I've had people dropping envelopes for you all over the place. You're being watched. Poor Lug spent his evenings at Kemp's for the last fortnight. Lug? Magus Fontaine Lug, my man. Borstal and Parkhurst. Oh, quite a character. And uh, <laughs> what's all this about a long road? A form of salutation used by the other side to recognize each other. Well, I'm in your hands. What do we do? Call the police? No, not yet. The first thing is for you to put things right with your father. How did you know I was on bad terms with Yours him? is a famous name. Is it going to be difficult? Oh, no. I'd have had to go down soon anyway. I'm 25 on July the 2nd, and there's a family custom that on his 25th birthday, 
the male heir is shown the secret room and uh, whatever's inside it. Well, I don't want to pry into family secrets, but um, do you know what's there? No. My father does. He's never said a word. There are all sorts of rumours, of course. All right. We've got to stop these people getting the chalice. If we can. What do we do? We go down to Suffolk. But this Societe Anonyme, with all the money in the world, how are we going to fight people like that? Aha, they have one weakness, an interesting one. They obey very strict rules, one of which is that if their chosen agent meets his death in the execution of his duty, they admit defeat and leave well alone. Do we know who this agent is? No, but we'll find out. And then kill him? Oh. Oh, let's say dispose of him. Now, how soon can we start? Any time. All right, I'll get Lud to pack some things in the morning, and down we go. The last time I come past here, Mr. Girth, it was in a police van. I remember the time, because I was in for three months. Oh, I wish you'd shut up, Lug. We're going to a house where they have real servants. You'll have to behave. Without appearing unduly curious, Val, I should like to know if you anticipate any serious difficulty in getting all friendly with your parents. It seems to me an important point just now. I don't think so. It's really been my own pig-headedness that has kept me from going back ever since... If there's anything about a woman, you can tell him. He's been disappointed himself. Shut up, Lug. How far now, Val? Only a few miles. Uh, do you feel like some lunch before we get there? Oh, why not? Well, this is quite a good pub we're just coming to. All right. Let's see what they can do while Lug samples the beer in the four ale bar. But doesn't <laughs> Lug eat lunch? Not if he can help it. <laughs> More cheese. Oh, thanks. I wonder who this chap is we're looking for. I can't believe he's one of the natives. They don't get much beyond poaching. They're characters, all right. You wait till you meet old Peck and his son. But I can't see them mixed up in this kind of thing. Well, the person I really want to meet is this aunt of yours. Aunt Diana? Mm. She's a bit odd, and that's putting it mildly. I gather from the caption to that photograph that she calls herself Maid of the Cup. Yes. Apparently, in medieval times, when the menfolk were away fighting, the eldest daughter of the house was supposed to remain unmarried and shut herself up in Cup House. That's on the estate. And attend to the relic. Everybody had forgotten all about it until Aunt Diana raked it up from somewhere. And ever since Uncle died, she shut herself up in Cup House and treated herself like a sort of vestal virgin. <laughs> Has she any other eccentricities? Oh, mysticism, modern art, and all that sort of thing. Wears funny clothes and wanders about at night communing with the stars and disturbing game. <laughs> Father hates it, but what can he do? Val, Val, what is this trouble with your father? Oh, I'd, I'd rather not go into it. It started at Cambridge. I fell in love with a girl who lived there. I married her. My father cut me off. The girl died. And I haven't been home since. Oh, wait, don't be such a fool. I always have that table. Okay, sorry, Mrs. Hannon, but we didn't know you were coming. Oh, we have to book now, do we? Oh, yes, Is this club getting too big for its boots or something? Who's the horsey-looking no, woman kicking up the fuss? This is Dick Shannon. She's got a racing stable on Heron Ho Heath. Frightful woman. I hope she doesn't see me. Oh, now we're for it. Oh, so you're back, eh? Didn't know you'd made friends with your father again. I've just come from the tower. Oh, yes? May I introduce... I'm going to make him sell me two yearlings. What does he want with the racehorses? I saw your aunt, too. How is she? Gets sillier every day. Oh, you can tell your father from me I'm going to have those yearlings if I have to steal them. He's not capable of training them. Oh, I heard your wife died. I'm so sorry. Oh, goodbye. I'll be seeing you. Now, wait, what about that table? Sorry about that. What an awful woman. I can't stand her. Makes a nuisance of herself everywhere. Let's pay the bill and get away. Who do you think I saw in the four ale bar? Some low friend of yours, no doubt. I should say. Little Natty Johnson. Oh, so he's around. Who's Natty Johnson? A race gang tough, one of the Cleaver gang. Hmm. Was he with anyone? Chap with a beard. Arty bloke. And what do you think? This arty bloke staying at the tar. Is staying he at home? Friends of Lady Pithick. Oh, that's interesting. 
and this bearded man he was... was talking confidential with Natty Johnson. I know first-class dicks would arrest him for that. <laughs> so do I. Look, Val, I think it might be as well to stop in the village before you go on up to the tower and see what else we can find out. So do I. We'll go to the three drummers. Mrs. Bullock will look after you like a mother. I'll wait there with you and we'll send a note up to Penny. Penny? My sister. Lovely girl. I'll get her to come down and she can give us all the news. Room all right? Oh, yes, rather. There's Penny, just parking her car. Oh. Oh, who's the girl with her? I've no idea. Albert, this isn't just some silly trick to get me back into the bosom of the family, is it? I assure you, it's nothing of the kind. You do realize that the cup house is burglar-proof. No ordinary thief would touch the chalice. No ordinary thief would want to. You seem to have forgotten your fun in the taxi cab. Yes, but... No, you old darling. Penny. Mm. My word, Mrs. Bullock was right. You look marvellous. <laughs> oh, it's good to see you. Uh, where on earth have you been? Oh, never mind that now. This is a friend of mine, Albert Campion. How do you do? How do you do? And this is Beth, Beth Carey. Glad to know you, Mr. Garrett. Mr. Campion. Hello. <laughs> Val, you, you haven't heard about the Careys, have you? Beth's people have taken Ty Hall. Oh, that's the house on the ed edge of the estate, Mr. Campion. Oh, yes. It's wonderful having neighbours again. Father's not been too nice about it, though. Oh, why not? Well, you see, the professor, uh, that's Beth's father, he's um, let the gypsies camp in Fox Hollow. Oh. oh that's Mother's fault, I'm afraid. She thinks they're picturesque. But poor Verly Gorn's vanished this morning, so she may change her mind. <laughs> Penny, is everything all right up there? Mm, you're like an old pointer. No, things aren't all right. What's up? Oh, Father's in a very strange mood altogether. He's furious about that photograph of Aunt Di. I don't wonder. And then she's invited a lot of art students down. He's, um, he's shut himself in his room and we scarcely ever see him. Yes? Last night, there was a light in the east wing. I'd better come up with you straight away. Uh, Albert, you don't mind if I go up to the house with Penny, do you? No, of course not. I'll spend a few hours training lug for polite society. <laughs> come up to dinner when I've made my peace with Father. Oh, thank you. Come on, Penny. Let's go up and get it over. See you later then, Mr. Campion. Goodbye. Goodbye. Evening, Gov. Did I give you a good time? Oh, yes, thank you, Lug. And thanks for waiting up. I thought you'd be safely tucked up in bed. Not odd of what I've heard in the bar tonight. It's my opinion we ought to op it. Oh? Why? Do you know they got a blinking two-headed monster up at their place? At the tower? That's right. There's a secret room. And when the son of the ass becomes 25, his father takes him in and shows him the horror. And he's never the same again. Like the king that hit the winkles. How much beer did it take you to collect that little tale? You'll see when I put in my bill for expenses. And that wasn't all. Really? No, it wasn't. I went for a walk. And what do you think I saw? A bald-headed woman. Not just a bit gone on top. She was quite airless. Well? I asked about her. Mrs. Munns is her name. And she's a witch. Oh, gum now. Well, they all believe oh. it. And then they come out with a yarn about an haunted wood that they none of them go near out of the dark. I don't like it. Let's go home. Lug, we're doing nothing of the sort. And next time I want a bedtime story, I shan't ask you for it. Thanks to you, I look forward to a night of extremely unpleasant dreams. Good night. I tell you. What's the matter? What's happened? They want you up at the tower. Yes, but... It's Lady Pethick. They brought her in early this morning, stone dead. Have you 
sent for Campion, Penny. Yes, and for Dr. Cobden. Oh, Val, did you see her? I was first down in the hall when Will and his son brought her in and hurdle. Look in her face. She saw something dreadful, Val. She died of fright. Don't think of it. She's got a bad heart, you know that. And if she will go wandering around Pharisee's clearing at night... Oh. oh. Come in. Oh, good morning, Dr. Cobden. Val, my boy. I'm glad to see you. You couldn't have come at a better time. You're needed here, I can tell you. Your father, good man, isn't much assistance in an emergency. There'll have to be an inquest, I suppose, sir. Well, no, I don't think that will be necessary as it happens. I'm the coroner of this district, don't you know? And I've been in attendance on your poor aunt so often lately. There was always a danger, of course, that any severe shock might have aggravated her heart condition. However, I never saw any reason to frighten her. Yes, but, Doctor, she died of fright. Her face. Oh, my dear, death is often ugly. I'm sorry you should have had to see your aunt. Of course, she must have had a shock, don't you know? Probably she saw an owl or trod on a rabbit. I warned her about this stupid wandering at night. Has father taken it? Well, that's what I wanted to see you about. It's been a great shock to him, naturally. So, I want all these friends of your aunt's out of the way as soon as possible. They're getting on his nerves. Well, we'll soon see to that. They're all down at the cup house. I'll send Branch down. Good. Now, about the funeral, I should, uh, well, uh, get it over quietly. No need to fill the house with visitors. You darling, you're trying to hush it all up for us. Oh, my dear child, I never heard such nonsense. There's nothing to hush up. I, uh, I should fix it for Wednesday. The sooner you get these things over, the better. Now, don't bother to come down with me. I'll drop in again tomorrow. Goodbye for now. Goodbye. Well, he suspects something. All this quiet funeral business, it's so unlike him. Oh, I don't know. He told us her heart was bad. But there is something down in Pharisee's clearing, something terrible. Come in. Enter suspicious character. Albert, thank heavens you've arrived. <laughs> thank you for those few kind words. I met an irate old gentleman on the stairs who invited me to take the next train from Hadley. Oh, Dr. Cobden. <laughs> I'm afraid he mistook you for one of the arty crowd. Oh. <laughs> We've got to send Branch down to the cup house and turf them out, unless you want to see them first. Uh, no, I don't think so. Oh, there's only one thing. I suppose Branch will superintend their luggage. Yes. Well, I'd like to send Lug along to help him. And what's the point of that? Oh, he's a very expert packer. He'll understand what I want him to do. You'll soon see. Here you are, sir. All the doings, just like you thought. And whose traps do you think they were in? Well, the bloke with the ginger beard I saw talking to Natty Johnson. What's all this? What's he found? Some drawings of your aunt in one of their suitcases. They're rather interesting. I don't see the point. No, do I. Well, the point is that in each of them, there is also a sketch of the chalice. Look, he's done it from every angle. He's even jotted down measurements. Oh, very professional. What was the idea? To give them to a jeweler and have the chalice copied. With the aim, no doubt, of substituting the copy for the real thing at some convenient moment so that they could get it out of the country before anything was spotted. The beasts! Why don't we ring the station and have them all arrested? Well, he'd only retort that we'd pinched his diagrams and then Lug's record would come out and we'd all be in the soup. Well, I like that. No offence, Lug, you've done a fine job. Now, off you go and play trains. Play Are you sure play we play oughtn't play to go after this fellow? Well, he can't do much without these. And in any case, he's only small fry. What we want is the big man. Sir, there's a man out there snooping round that chapel place. Look, he's standing on a pile of stones looking through the window. I thought you said they'd all gone. Well, so they have. It's not one of the arty crowd, sir. Look, he's quite old. Little fellow with a white beard. I see him. Well, who is it? Anyone you know, Penny? Oh, well, of course it is. That's Professor Gardner Carey. Excuse me, sir. Oh, uh, yes, ma'am? A party has just come visiting. Visiting? Tourists on horseback. Day after the funeral, get me? Not quite the article. Albert, have you ever heard such cheek? Mrs. Dick Shannon has just arrived with two complete strangers. 
What a call of condolence. No, she wants us to show our two beastly friends the chalice. Well, why should you? Well, we do open the chapel to visitors as a rule on a Thursday. It's part of the Royal Charter, but it is a bit stiff, isn't it? Mrs. Dick Shannon, I remember the loud-voiced lady. Mm, Father can't stand her. He won't come down. <laughs> Please come and help me do the honours. All right. Where are they? They're waiting outside the cup house. Val's gone down to keep them off. Now, come on, Penny Girls. Are you going to show us over this museum or not? I'm afraid the horses may be getting bored. This is Mr. Campion, a friend of Val's. Oh, yes. Well, this is Major King, if we're going to have introductions. How do you do, Miss Guth? My other guest, Horace Putnam. Very pleased, I'm sure. Oh, well, come on. Let's see the thing. Oh, is your father coming, Val? I wanted to talk to him about those yearlings. I'm afraid father's not too well at the moment. Oh? Oh, no, no of course. Poor Diana. I think it didn't happen years ago. Cobden's such an old fool. I wouldn't let him bet me for chilblains. Well, never mind. You've got the keys. That's the main thing. Well, up and up. I call this place a chapel, Horace. How very quaint. You have to dress it up a bit, I suppose. I'm afraid the lock of this door's a bit stiff. I'll do it. No. Let me. I say. You're strong in the wrist for a woman. Hey, can't be flabby in my profession, Major. I'll eat the way, Penny Girls. After you, Mr. Campion. Oh, thank you. Do you know, I saw Mrs. Shannon training that horse of hers called Bitter Aloes this morning. Vicious brute. I thought he was going to kill her. She won, though. Used her whip like a ringmaster. Really? Here we are. Uh, we keep the chalice in this stone cavity over the altar. Have to unlock the grill. Another key. What a business you make of it. Look, why do you have that black cloth over it? Whenever a death occurs in the family, the chalice is veiled. We don't usually disturb it for ten days. Oh, really? Well, do you show the thing on Thursdays or don't you? Oh, all right, then. Here you are. Oh, oh, well. what? It's gone. A couple of bricks. What sort of a chalice do you call that? Well, it's not my idea of humor. Sheer bad taste. Well, I, I simply can't understand it. Penny, I... what on earth? Just a moment. I think I can explain. Father. Oh, oh Colonel Gertz, so you've come after all. I thought I'd better. You see, I had so much on my mind. At the moment, I had quite forgotten. I've forgotten what, man? Is this some stupid practical joke you're trying to play on us? It's not a joke. I'm afraid you're all going to be disappointed. Well, what do you mean, sir? The chalice is being cleaned. But what? Cleaned? Yes, Mrs. Shannon. The chalice is being cleaned. I'm afraid you and your friends will have to come some other time. Well, upon my soul, we... No, well, for right. God's sake, get these awful people out of here. And then meet me in the library, all of you. Thank heaven that woman's gone. I only pray my explanation satisfied her. Father... Do you mean the chalice has really gone? Of course it has. Vanished into thin air. I veiled it on Sunday morning, just after you said that busybody Carey was fooling about in the courtyard. It was perfectly safe then. Hadn't we better send for the police? No, not yet. Oh, what are we to do? We can't just sit down and wait for it to turn up. Couldn't you send for the chief constable? He's a friend of yours. I could, but he'd only question the servants and cause a lot of fuss. No, we've got to find this thing ourselves. I'm convinced it's still in the house. Look, Dad, if you've hidden it for some reason or other, please tell us. Don't be a fool. Val, you come of age in a week. If your birthday were today, perhaps I should find this easier to explain. Now, please, I should like to be left alone. <laughs> Morning, Penny. Mr. Campion, what are you trying to do? Get run over? No, rather not. I hoped you might be able to give me a lift. Well, I can give you a lift as far as the village. I'm on my way to town to see my dressmaker. Oh, splendid. I'm going to London, too. Well, this is a stroke of luck. I knew I'd never walk it. You've got a cheek getting in before I ask you. Well, there does seem to be room. And London is rather a long way. Well, if you really want to know, I'm taking Beth with me. Oh. She's waiting for me to pick her up at the crossroads. Oh, that's all right. I don't mind being squashed. 
Or perhaps you'd like me to sit in the dicky? No. <laughs> you'd better stay where you are if you must come. Bess. Uh-huh. Mr. Campion and Fiston are giving him a lift. Can you squeeze in? Well, let me get out, and then you can sit between us. Uh, okay. Huh. Pardon me. <clears throat> Why don't you use your own car? I prefer other people. Such a saving of petrol. Why are you going to London, Mr. Campion? To buy a ribbon for my straw hat. The thing I've got now, my aunt knitted. <laughs> Why don't you turn him out, Penny? Oh, I shouldn't do that. I know a man who did that once, and when he got home, he found that the suitcase he put at the back of the car was missing. You wouldn't like that, would you? Oh, damn. Stalled it. Well, start it again. Oh, the battery's down. You'll have to get out and crank her, Mr. Campion. Oh, certainly. Here, leave the dickie alone. Penny, what's he doing? Well, I'd really be much happier in the dickie. <laughs> Mr. Campion, please. Ah, a suitcase. Don't you open that. Now, listen, you're both very charming ladies, but I'm going to disregard your warning. No, oh, oh, but Mr. Don't Campion, open don't. That case, please. Oh. Ah, just as I thought. My dear young ladies, where exactly do you think you're taking the girth chalice? You dirty... No, Beth, it's no good. Oh. We're sunk. Oh, why did you have to interfere, Mr. Campion? Well, I'm afraid I play the role of the genie of the lamp. Wherever the chalice is, I'm liable to turn up at any moment. What were you going to do with it? Keep it safe. Don't tell him. But we must, Beth. Oh. We were going to put it in the Chancery Lane safe deposit. You were going to tell your father? Well, of course. We relied on the ten days veiling. But then Mrs. Shannon came along and spoiled the whole thing. Mr. Campion, you've been spying on us. Oh, my dear Penny, you used the phone in the hall to talk to Beth last night, and you shouted so much that one would have to have been deaf not to be a spy. And then, when you were so annoyed at my suggestion that I should sit in the dickie... Oh, well... right, you win. <laughs> now, I suppose, we go back. Oh, no, we go on. Your brother's waiting for us at a pub in Coggishall. A pub with a very nice name. The case is altered. And if I say so, the, the sooner we get there, the better. Mm, no, have it your own way. Hello, my dear sister. There. Don't play fair. On the contrary, you talk too loud. There was no need to listen. I couldn't help oh, it. Oh, stop it. Now, let's be practical. Now, what we've got to do is to get the chalice to London. That was the whole idea. Yes, but we've got a better plan than your safe deposit. Huh? What's that? I know a firm in the city who'll turn us out a first-rate copy of the chalice. What's the point of that? Well, simply that I'd rather be playing hide-and-seek with a copy than with a real thing. However, the uh, immediate problem is to get it safely to London. We're pretty certain to be followed. Who's to know it isn't still on the chapel? Now, what about our visitors yesterday? The unpleasant Mr. Putnam, who's making use of your retiring little friend, Mrs. Shannon, had a face vaguely familiar to me. I don't think he knew me, but he certainly knew that the chalice had disappeared. And I'm open to bet that he's not 20 miles away from here now. Is this Putnam the big fellow you were talking about? Oh, scarcely that. But he's certainly in the dab class. That's why I think we'd better split up. Now, I suggest you and I take the chalice, Penny, mm -hmm. and Val and Miss Carey follow us and uh, come to our assistance if need be. But do you really think they're going to follow us? There's been no sign of them yet. No, because up to this point we might have come several different ways. Oh. Now we've got to go straight to Kelton and join the main road. That's where they'll be patrolling, I fancy. We could make a detour. Well, to tell you the truth, I'm, I'm rather keen to see our friends in action. All right, then. Let's get going. Hmm. Where's your car, Val? Round the back, getting some petrol. Oh, we go first, Penny. Oh, how about letting me take the wheel? I've got testimonials from every magistrate in the country. Yes, I'm sure. When does the fun begin? Any time now, I should think. What's happened to the others? There's no sign of them. Hmm. I hope they won't get too far behind. Well, perhaps they can't keep up. You're going pretty fast, you know. I have my reasons. This is a lonely stretch of road, and there's a large German car coming up behind us. Ah, she's going to pass.
Now, whatever happens, don't try and hit anybody. What are you talking about? Well, just round this corner, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, there you are. They're right across the road. Ah, oh, here they come. Three of them? But what do we do? Well, I told you, lose your head if you like, but don't try and hit anybody. Ah, oh, quiet, you two. This thing's loaded. You know what we're after. Natty, you go and tinker with the bonnet. Okay. Charlie, you stand behind and wave things by. Okay. What's all this about? Ah, shut up. Come on now, where is it? I'm sorry, I don't wish to subscribe. I'm not a music lover. There's a van coming. All right, wave it by like I told you. Don't you move, either of you. You've had a breakdown, see, and we're helping you. Nice of us. You should take glycerine for your voice and peppermint for your breath. Ah, cut it out. All clear. Right, Charlie. Have a squint in the dicky. No. Thank you, miss. Now we know. Oh, there's only my lunch in there. Oh, your lunch, is it? Ah, here we are, fingers. Oh, it was enough. Let's have a look. Here, these locks have been bunged up. Give us a knife. Yeah. Oh, here, yeah, another car coming. Well, we'll open it in the bus. Come on, boys. Let's go up there. Oh, Mr. Campion. Well, there wasn't very much we could do, was there? Oh. Oh, I say, you're crying. Well, of course I am. You don't seem to realize. I, I was only trying to help, and all I've done is... Well, I never heard anyone make such a fuss over six bottles of bitter. You mean... I warned them that they were taking my lunch, but they wouldn't listen. Then where's the... The chalice is quite safe. Did you notice that trade van our friends waved on so carefully? Well, that was Val and Beth, and they've got the chalice with them. With them? Hmm. We're meeting them at the Huguenot Arm in with them. So, let's get going. Well, this merry morning seems to have become something of a pub crawl. I think you're all beasts. <laughs> Sorry, Penny. Well, it's all on my head, but I did want to get a look at the boys in action. Did you recognize any of them, Mr. Campion? Oh, yes. The unsavory object with the revolver was Fingers Hawkins. Oh. He's an old thorn in lug's flesh. I knew the others vaguely. All sound reliable workmen. <laughs> They're probably swinging the beard at this moment and playing who says the rudest word. Well, what happens now? Well, the immediate problem We've got it is... all worked out. You two kids are going home by kids? train. It really is the best plan. Yes, but what about the van? That's been taken care of. It belongs to a firm in Ipswich. They're fetching it. Hmm? All right, mastermind. And who's this man you're going to in the city? Mr. Israel Melchizedek, an old friend of mine. Can you trust him? Absolutely. His family have been jeweler's copyists for several hundred years. He'll be as silent as the grave. When will you be back? Tomorrow, if all goes well. Oh, I don't think there's a chance of any trouble, but should the worst come to the worst, rely on luck. He's as good as a police force and about as beautiful. <laughs> I still think you're beast. Oh, leave it to us, Penny. We're doing the best thing. Well, what shall I tell Father? Oh, nothing. I'll have a word with him when I get back. Now, come on, Val. Let's see the girls over to the station and then go and present ourselves to Mes Mr. Melchizedek. Champion. Oh, I am so very glad to see you. How are you, Mr. Melchizedek? Oh, well, we none of us grow any younger. Oh, I, I want you to meet a friend of mine, Val Girth. Girth? Not Mr. St. John Wyke's Girth? Yes. Ah, yes. We want your very special and very secret advice. Uh, will you come through to my office, please? We can speak there without being overheard or disturbed. Oh, thank you. You wish me to make a copy, perhaps, of a very famous chalice? Taking the long road, Mr. Melchizedek? Oh, oh, no, my friend. I have too many friends to follow any road but my own. Oh, thank heavens for that. We've brought you the girth chalice. Unwrap it, Val. Oh, this will be an experience for me. I know, of course, of the history of the girth chalice, but I've never seen it. In the last 200 years, we have been privileged to handle many treasures, but even so... Well, here it is. Oh, a beautiful piece. Exquisite workmanship. Oh, yes. Mm. Oh, but Mr. Campion, Mr. Girth, 
Surely you are not suggesting that this is medieval? Of course it is. It's been in our family no, since... But Mr. Girth, if you will allow me to look at our records, I can tell you exactly when this copy was made. What the devil? Wait, Val. You... I'd rather you didn't take my word for it. I am an old man, and remarkable mistakes of period do occur. And just by chance, I happen to have in the next room one of the most famous experts on this subject in the world. Well, then. Yes, yes, well, fortunate. He was calling on me when you arrived and did me the honor to wait until I should be disengaged. Uh, you can rely on his discretion. What do you say? I think we ought to have his opinion. So do I. I'm very glad. I'll ask him to come in. But this is madness. Oh, no, it's not. But Let I... them do the talking. I believe I'm beginning to get this thing straight at last. Gentlemen, allow me to introduce the great American authority, Professor Carey. Professor Carey? Well, what do you know, Melchizedek? I think I owe this gentleman here a bit of an apology for uh, trespassing in his garden the other day. I don't know if you saw me. We saw you, all right. You were looking into the chapel. Well, sure I was. I'm writing a book on East Anglian church decoration, and uh, now I'm not on speaking terms with your father, I just can't get inside that chapel of yours. So I thought I'd do a little spying, even if it meant being chased by the gardener's boy. <laughs> Everyone thought you were after the chalice. Well, I guess I could have done with that, too. But I see you've brought it with you. There it is. We want your opinion on it. Oh, uh, may I borrow your glass, Melchizedek? But of course. Yes. Ah, thank you. Um, a lovely thing. Lovely. Well, uh, just what do you want to know about it? Whatever you like to tell us. Well, the design is Renaissance. What? But the workmanship is very much later. I put it down as about uh, 150 years old. This is fantastic. Mr. Girth, I think I could prove it to you. Uh, these jeweled bosses around the pedestal, if I'm not mistaken, one of them should un unscrew. Ah, yes. Yes, do you see? Now, this was the custom of my great-great-grandfather. He always signed his pieces so. There. Do you see? He's engraved it. I, Melchizedek, face it, 1792. I wasn't far. I... But do you see what this means? This is what my family accept, at least my father and I do, as the Girth Chalice. Uh, Mr. Girth, I'd like to have a word with you and your friend. Maybe there's somewhere we could go away and talk. Well, come to my flat. That's as good as anywhere. Oh, it suits me. See you, Melchizedek. Good day, Jim. Good day. Campion, I guess we'd better confess to Mr. Girth right now. Yes. The truth is, Val, I've had my doubts about the chalice ever since I saw that photograph in Society Illustrated. So I called on my old friend, Professor Carey, and begged him to meet us at Melchizedek's. But how did you know the girls were going to take the chance? Well, I didn't. I was going to persuade you to do it. But the girls jumped the gun. <sighs> it's beyond me. I don't want to upset any family arrangements whereby you're told certain things at a certain age. But what you've got here is a mock chalice. Mock chalice? Probably the last of many. All different in design. Then where's the real one? Oh, make no mistake. It's in your family's possession. Otherwise, you would have forfeited your land. Yes, but where? I think that point will be made clear to you on your 25th birthday next week. But of course. The room. That's it. That room does contain something terrible. I know it does. All my life, my father's been overshadowed by something. And my grandfather was the same. I've never talked about it before. But there is something there. The real chalice is made of red English gold. It's probably a little bigger than a man's cupped hand. But I don't think there's any doubt that it has a very terrible and effective guard. Oh! 
Albert. Oh, thank heavens, you're back. Hello, Penny. Where's Val? Oh, I left him in London. No trouble, just part of the master plan. <laughs> well, what's the matter? You look worried. Something terrible's happened to Lug. You must be joking. No, I'm not. He's had a fit. Fit? Yes, it happened about dawn. I heard something howling outside my window. What was it? Lug. Well, I suppose he hadn't found the keys to the wine cellars by any chance. No, nothing like that. He's been down to Pharisee's Clearing. Mm -hmm. Well, you told him to go there. Well, I was only trying to keep the old brood occupied. He saw what Aunt Di saw. Oh. Oh, well, in that case, we're getting somewhere. Lead me to the patient. Now then, lad, what is all this? I've resigned. So I should hope. Well, that's all you've got to say, is it? By no means. I leave you in a respectable household. A couple of owls hoot at you, and you carry on like a hysterical calf elephant. I lost me nerve. So I gather. And so would you if you'd seen what I've seen. What have you seen? A monster. Oh, really? Not. I tell you, I did. Down in that wood last night. As filthy a sight as I ever clapped eyes on. A great thin thing with little short legs and horns on its head. A goat? You listen to me, Gav. This thing was walking on its hind legs. Oh. It had human hands and it was nine feet high. Oh, really? I tell you, I saw it. It's the thing from the secret room. That's what it is. Stop that. Never mention that. Do you understand? Okay, Gav. Well, you'd better get up. And whatever you do, don't say a word to Brown or any of the other servants. Pretend you've had a bilious attack. Boy. That's not quite the article. Heart attack, if you don't mind. All right, all right, heart attack. But get up. And remember, not a word to anybody. Come on, Penny. Well, where are we going? To see Professor Carey. Let's walk through the grounds. I've got quite a lot to tell you. So, you see, we've got the wrong chalice. I just can't believe it. It's true, all right. But the point is that the other side don't know yet. So they're still trying to get hold of it. They'd soon know if they got it. They're no fools. Where is it now, then? In my London flat, being guarded by Val. Is that safe? Couldn't be safer. The flat's directly over a police station, and the police are watching it like hawks. Meanwhile, we've got three days before Val's birthday to try and sort things out down here. Three days? Where do we start? We've absolutely nothing to go on. Oh, yes, we have. That's my other piece of news. I've got a line on our friends. How? By parting with a fiver in one pound notes. That's how he wanted it. Oh, Albert, please. What have you found out? Well, yesterday evening, I had a visit at my flat from a very uninviting gentleman called Ernie Walker. Who's he? He's the man who drove the large German car that held us up on the way to town. Why on earth did he come to see you? To make a fiver. Ah. He thought I might like to know something he overheard his friends saying when they found all they'd got was some bottles of beer. What? The words were... We'll have to answer to the daisy for this. Who's the daisy? Exactly. Who is the daisy? I checked with my friends, the police downstairs. A chap called the daisy was hanged at Manchester five years ago. And since then, the name has become rather fashionable with a smaller fry. But our man's the boss. And I've got a hunch that if we can lay Lug's ghost, we'll get a line on him. Of course, Lug may have gone batty and imagined the whole thing. No, I'm sure he didn't. Oh? If you'd been brought up among country people as I have, you wouldn't scoff. I wasn't scoffing. If I was, I wouldn't have suggested bringing in Professor Carey. If it is a genuine local phenomenon, you can bet your boots he knows all there is to know about it. But of course, Miss Gerth. I heard this yarn about the ghost long before your poor aunt passed over. In fact, here you catch me trespassing again. I've sat up several nights in your father's woods. Did you see anything? I can't say I did. I tried an automatic photograph once or twice, you know, with a trip wire. Any luck? Well, I did get a picture once that could have been something tall, with horns, but it was all too blurred. It could have been a freak plate, I suppose. Well, we are going ghost hunting tonight. Would you like to join us? Sir, I just can't tell you how much that idea appeals to me. I say, why did we bring in young Peck to help us? He and his father know more about this countryside than all the rest of Sanctuary put together. He works for you, doesn't he, Professor? Yes, I was going to suggest it myself. 
As a matter of fact, old Peck has been my chief source of information in this affair. He has a cottage just down there, Mr. Campion, and spends all his days sitting in the sun, when you have any. Now, I'll tell you what. You two stay and have a bit of lunch, and then we'll go down there and get the youngster on the job. Good afternoon, Mr. Peck. Ah, ah, good day, Missy. Is your son anywhere about? Ah, purse. Gentry be here. I'm now coming. Ah, good day, Miss Penny. Good day, Professor. I hear that were a quiet burying. Your heart was poisoned. Now, will you be quiet, Father. Don't you speak ill of the dead. Can I be helping you at all, Miss Penny? Yes, Percy. I want you to take Mr. Campion and Professor Carey down to Pharisee's clearing tonight. They, um, they think there's an animal there that wants snaring. Do you understand? Yes, miss. You wouldn't be scared, would you? Mm, no, miss. That ain't no animal, miss. That's a spirit, like I told Master Carey. Of course, we don't want any tales told about this, you understand. Oh, us don't talk, sir. Was you thinking of trapping that now, or do you want to shoot it? Oh, trap it, certainly. Percy, do you remember when you and I were kids, Val and I helped you and young Finch to catch an old ram that had gone wild in the Happy Valley? That was with a stack net, wasn't it? Yes, us could do that. Allowing that's real. You'll catch nothing. That's a spirit. You'll drop a net and that'll go right through it. Why, that was water. <laughs> you can make fools yourselves here like. Oh, you won't hurt. What do you think about it, Percy? Oh, I don't know, miss. I never rightly thought on it. Still, I, I ain't afraid of it. And you'll be down at Ty Hall at about 11.30 with a stack net. I'll be there 11.30. I won't. If you're wise, you'll stay in your beds, same as I do. Uh, there'll be more goos on at night than us thinks on. You stay out on it, miss. That ain't no wild ship down in Pharisees. And whatever comes on it, it don't be no good. If that owl cries again, I shall have hysterics. I wish you two girls would go to bed and keep out of it. Nonsense. We're going to hold the fort for you and Albert. Whether you see a ghost or not, you want something hot when you come in. Well, I suppose you'll be all right up here. Extraordinary how these old houses do creak at night, though. You we shall hold each other's hands till you come back. Oh, what's that? I be here, sir. Ah, Percy, well done. Am I right for time, sir? Oh, fine. We'll go out by the side door, Campion. Oh, wait there a minute, will you? We'll come around to you. Good luck, and do be careful. Here we are. Now, what's that dog you've got there? Oh, tis Nab, sir, my old dog. I reckon I'd bring him with me. He'll be quiet as a mace, won't you, boy? Have you got the net? Here it be, sir. To the piece of an old un. I reckon us mm. couldn't manage a whole heavy un. Well, what's the plan, then? Well, I reckoned I'd find a good tree with a branch sticking out on it. And I'd set on that with a net. And uh, when the thing come beneath, then I'd drop the net over it. Well, suppose it doesn't come under your tree. Oh, I don't know that well, sir. That chases people, sir. Hmm? Oh, I see. We, we've got to be the bait. That's so, sir. Now, if you don't mind, us will keep quiet. I'll go first, if you please. All right, Percy. Lead on. We'll follow. Well, this is the place and the hour, all right. When does the performance begin, I wonder? It's certainly the right scene for it. Uh, almost too good to be true. Look at the moonlight on those trees. Oh, I don't wonder they don't come here. Where's that dog? Mm -hmm. Oh, it's guarding its master at the foot of the tree. That won't move. Professor, what do you think we're going to see if we see anything? Well, I don't want to make any guesses in case my hunch is absolutely wrong. Yes, but you don't really believe in, in ghosts. 
If this is what I think it is, it's worse than any ghost. What was that? Hmm? Only a hair. Oh, I'm beginning to look forward to that hot drink when we... Now listen. What about that? Whatever it is, it's coming this way. There it is in the opening. God, Lug was right. It has got horns and it's... Get the smell. It's seen us. Here it comes. Lead it to the tree. It's rushing us. Run for it. Quiet, Nab. Quiet. We got it, sir. It's in the net. Uh, let's have a look. Quiet, Nab. Oh, look at that, sir. I knew it. I'm right. Quiet, Nab. Oh, this is one of the most remarkable survivals I ever heard of. Do you know what we've got here, Campion? A woman? Yes, a witch. Now, gently now. I'm afraid she's collapsed. We must get this net off her now. Hold this torch, will you, Peck? All right, sir. Land sakes, I hope the shock hasn't killed her. This thing she's wearing is made of goat skin. Yes. And the headdress is a goat's skull. Now, if we can get it off... Uh, uh, here it, it comes. <sighs> Look, how hideous. Why, she's absolutely bald. Tis old Mrs. Munsey. Mrs. Munsey? The old un said she were a witch, but I took no heed on it. Lummy, who'd have thought it? Oh, where does she live? Alone, I suppose. She lives with her son, sir, Sammy. And they ain't neither of them right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have to carry her there. Is it far? No, that ain't no distance. One thing, that's some way from any other house. Tell you what, sir, I'll go and take a hurdle from the fence by that's there. That's a good idea. Come on, Nab. Well, I wouldn't have believed it if I hadn't seen it. Well, I suspected it all along. The goat horns and the yarns about the curious chantings all pointed to it. Oh, the woman's a lunatic, of course. But there's no doubt at all in my mind that she's descended from a regular line of practicing witches. She's a throwback. Probably she realizes what she's doing only in a dim, instinctive sort of fashion. Yes, but why? I mean, did, did someone put her up to it? Oh, that's what we've got to find out. Here's a hurdle, sir. Oh, good. Put her on it. It ain't above half a mile, sir. Oh. All the same, I, I wish she provided herself with a with a broomstick. Help me put her on the couch. God, what a filthy place. It oughtn't to be allowed. Whose land is this? Oh, but a waste, sir, as you might call it. Is that the sun? Hanging about outside? Well, that'll be Sammy, sir. <laughs> He's a natural. Sammy? Sammy, come here. No. Uh, now, no, don't we... be frightened, Sammy. Your, your mother fainted in the wood. You seen her in the wood. <laughs> don't you touch me. I ain't done nothing. Look, sir, what's he carrying? He's been snaring airs in the wood. Uh, Two of them. Uh, uh, they're mine. Oh, so, that's how they live. We never could make it out. Uh, mother, uh, they found us out. Uh, they find us out. Uh, oh, uh, leave uh, I alone. Uh, I won't hurt you. Uh, I won't hurt you if you go. Uh, 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 they, they found us out. Uh, Mrs. Munsey. Mm. Mrs. Munsey, did you frighten people out of Pharisee's clearing so that your son could poach in the wood? You won't take him away if I tell you. No, I won't touch him. Uh, Where be my goatskin robes? In the wood. Oh. We must get they. There'll be power in they. More than you know. Soon. Soon. Lie down now. Lie down till you're stronger. Tell me, why did you set on Lady Pethick? She wouldn't have stopped your son poaching. No. No, I didn't. Oh, yes, you did. No, no, uh, no. It was no, Daisy. No. Daisy told her. Daisy? Uh, don't you, don't you listen to him. You can't blame Daisy. She said... For to frighten her. That's all. Sammy. That's all. Sammy. 
Who is Daisy? Well, that, that's mm. Miss Daisy. My father worked for her one time when he was alive. Excuse me, uh, sir, that's Mrs. Daisy, he means. Mrs. Daisy Shannon, as keeps the horses on her and Owie. Now, it's your deal, Major. See if you can turn your luck. Well, you're holding all the cards, Daisy. Oh, no, it isn't the cards, it's a question of nerve, eh, Putnam? Major here never has the courage to see a thing through. Unlike you, Putnam, you're playing all you know. You know, Daisy, sometimes I wonder someone hasn't strangled you. My husband tried. <laughs> you got in first, I suppose. <laughs> Quiet, <laughs> listen. Somebody's knocking at the French windows. Open them, fingers. Good evening, everybody. Anybody got a good tip for the Ascot Gold Cup? Oh, Mr. Campion. Hello, Mrs. Shallon. Oh, what nice company I see. The gallant Major and my old friend Horace Putnam. And bless my soul if it isn't Fingers Hawkins. Thanks for opening the window, Fingers. Your manners were far less polished last time we met. He's alone. <laughs> what are you doing here? Calling. That must be obvious to the meanest intelligence. Has he got a gun? Oh, no, no, no. Nothing like that, I assure you. I don't like firearms. Well, don't fool about <laughs> Mine's trained on you. You look out for him, Mrs. He's as slippery as a nail. Oh, write that down and send it to our head office. Mr. Campion, <laughs> why have you come here? To look over your stables. I've just been round them. Oh, <laughs> most interesting. All those boxes and only one horse. I suppose the pretty creature has a different home each day, like Alice at the Mad Tea Party. Well, perhaps you'd better stay with us for a day or two. Hmm? Take him and lock him up in one of the boxes. Well, I'd better have a scout round outside, don't you think? Very well. Oh, whistle all the time. Eh? Well, then we know it's you. <laughs> What should we do meanwhile? Have a game of cards? Oh, no, I know. I'll tell your fortune, Mrs. Shadow. Ah, shut up. He's playing what? the time or something. Oh, dear me, no. Now, let's see. Oh, dear, dear, dear. Oh, there's a lot of knaves about you. And what's this? Oh, a whole stack of money. Don't be led astray by riches, lady. Ah, now, here comes the luck card. Ah, it's very close, but it doesn't quite touch. There's nobody out there that I can see. Shall we take him along? Don't interrupt. We're just coming to the exciting part. What's the Quiet, hell? Quiet, you... Major. Ah, there's a car. There's a journey here. Yes, a far journey. I see you take the long road, Mrs. Shannon. Oh, I'll stop mucking about. Where shall we put him, Daisy? Why don't we just chuck him out in his ear? Now, put him in the gate, Loft. You won't get out of that. What? I'm sorry, Mr. Campion. I'm afraid you're going to be distinctly uncomfortable for the next couple of days. Oh. Go on, take him along. Yeah. Then for heaven's oh, sake, let's get back off. to our game. Good morning, Luck. Good morning, Miss Penny. Any sign of him? He never come home. What's he up to, I wonder? You tell me. Ed's strong, that's what he is. All he said was, if he's not back by morning, we're to tell the professor. I think he's done a more than honest. That's what he's done. What do you mean, Dunham Moran? There was a murderer called Moran with a lot of thugs round him. And what did his nibs do when we couldn't get any satisfaction from Moran? But walk into his ass cool as you please. Why? Forcing him to kidnap him so he could find out what they were up to. I said to him, curiosity will kill you, my lad. Then he knows who it is? Of course he does. Probably know from his cradle. At least that's what he'll tell you. No Albert and no Val. And you realize what today is. Oh, perhaps that's him. But, uh, Sanctuary. Is that Sanctuary 2 Yes. Uh, I have a personal call for Miss Girth from London. Oh, it's for you, Miss. A trunk call. Thanks, Luck. Hello? Miss Girth? Yes? Uh, hold on, please. You're through London. Penny? Val! Well, what's happened? Where are you? In London, of course. What the heck? sake, it's your birthday. Father's kicking up like mad in case you won't be here. Dr. Cobden's coming and the vicar. Oh, never mind that. They've got the chalice. What? They've got the chalice. You know, the one I was guarding. But They oh. staged a fight outside the flat and diverted the police. Then two of them slipped upstairs and clocked me. Oh, Val, are you hurt? Well, my head isn't made of iron. Let me talk to Albert. He's not here. Not there? Where is he? We don't know. Oh, for heaven's sake. Well, Val, please, be practical. What are we going to do? You stay where you are. I'll grab a car and come straight down. Nug, they've got the mock chalice. That's done it. I'm going down to see the professor. You'd better wait by the telephone. Albert might ring. While I'm waiting, I'm going to read the situation's vacant. Oh, lummy, we are in a mess. Mr. 
Mrs. Shannon, I've been waiting for you all day. Haven't much option, have you? You didn't shave this morning. Well, none of your friends would trust me with a razor. I like men to be clean. That hardly explains your choice of subordinates. I've been hearing about you, Mr. Campion. Impudence seems to be your strong point. <laughs> I know why you've come here. Oh, why? It gives you an excellent excuse to explain to your employers why you've failed. My employer? Colonel Girth, or whoever it is. He's wasted his money. What makes you think I have failed? Mr. Campion, you've made us waste a lot of time making all that fuss about your spurious chalice. Yes, we've got it. We staged a nice little fight outside Bottle Street Police Station, which kept the police so busy that they failed to keep an eye on your flat. I'm afraid Val Girth must have a nasty headache. Uh, Mrs. Shannon, why not be content with the chalice you've got, hmm? I mean, tell your employers it's been in the cup house ever since it was made Don't talk and... like a fool. I know perfectly well where the real chalice is, and I'm going to get it. Why? For money? Naturally. I've been through two fortunes in my time, and that's why I need to get hold of another one. And no little rat like you is going to stop me. <laughs> ah, did you hear that? That's bitter aloes. She's in the box beneath here. She's vicious with strangers. Well, she's not too matey with the lady of the house. I saw you playing in the yard like a pair of kittens. <laughs> I thought she'd get you with her forefeet. You were very good with your whip, though. She killed a stable boy last year. I was supposed to have her shot, but I wangled out of it. That's how it happened. Wasn't a pretty death. Those forefeet of hers were like steel hammers. Hmm. You have a curious taste in pets. Fingers, Hawkins, and bitter aloes make a very fine pair. Hmm. Now, suppose we get back to business. Where do you imagine the real chalice is? In the secret room in the East Wing they make such a fuss about. I was a fool not to have thought of it before. And how do you expect to locate the secret room? Oh, well, this is the night of Valgar's coming of age, and by tradition, a light is burnt in the secret room all night. What? Ah, you didn't know that, did you? Well, I must say that you... Or your bosses have thought this out very cleverly. I only see one difficulty. Oh, what's that? Me. I can deal with you, all right. Take off your spectacles. What? I said take off your spectacles. All right. I must confess that I don't quite see the point. It's getting dark, so I can't see much with them. <laughs> uh, I just wanted to show you... Why, I've brought my riding whip. Ah! God, my face! Don't like oh, it! Oh, yeah. Neither does Victor Allen! Ah! 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 She's quite excited. Just in the mood to deal with you, Mr. Ah! Champion. Ah! Yes! No! Yes! Ah! Yes, Mr. Ah! Campion! Ah! Campion, are you all right? Yes. Yes, more or less. This horse has been trying to kill me. I, I managed to get up into this iron hay basket thing. Can, can you give me a hand up? I hear you. Thank you. Well, for heaven's sake, pull up that trap door. That horse is a killer. Whew. Hey, what's happened to your face? Did the horse do that? No. No, only it's mistress. The horse hadn't got a whip. Here, have some brandy. Oh, thanks. Mm. How on earth did you... Did you know I was here? Well, I didn't. I came along on the off chance. I've been hiding around all afternoon. What about Val? Well, he's back all right for the dinner. They've got the other chalice, though. Yes, yeah, so I gathered from Mrs. Shannon. So now... Now we've got to get out of here as fast as we can yes, make but the... it. The place is watched. Oh, who by? A few drunks. They don't like what's going on. Most of them have cleared out already. Milady's driven off anyway. Now, how do you feel? All right. If only we can avoid disturbing that damned horse. 
I got the car just outside the gate. Let's get there. There's a point we both overlooked. The light in that room. Yes, it burns all night. Yes, it'll be 30 years before they get a chance like this again. Come on. There it is. The red light high up in the tower. That must be the circular window right up at the top. I didn't think it'd be so high. Why on earth do they have to give it away like that? Oh, in the old days, every window would have been ablaze. Times have changed, but the old rule still stands. A light in the window from sunset to cock crow. Professor. What? Look at that window. There's something swinging in front of it, like, like a thread. Thread? That's a rope. Well, that's how they're going to do it. They're going to climb down from the roof. Come on, let's find our way up there. Quick as we can. Gosh, it's blowy up here. Now, don't get too near the edge. Ah, here's the rope. It's taut. Someone's climbing down on it. Careful. You'll go over. No, 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 I won't. I, I'm going to crawl till I can see. Hold on to my legs. Okay, I've got you. Now, careful, there's a loose bit of coping right, stone. Right, I see it. Uh, that's it. Uh, who is it? Mrs. Shannon. Mrs. Shannon, come back! Come back! I'll see you in hell first. If you look into that room, I'll cut this rope. You wouldn't have the guts. Get back. I'll deal with you later. All right, then. I'm going to pull you up. You haven't a hope. I've reached the window anyway. Mrs. Shannon, you're not to look in that window. You're too late. Got to stop this thing swinging about and turn myself round. Ah, Scotty. Now we'll soon see what. No. No, keep away. Keep away from me. No. Members of the jury, you've heard that death was instantaneous and due to contusion of the brain following a fracture of the skull caused by the fall. It seems probable that the deceased, a well-known sporting character of the district, attempted her giddy descent as the result of some wager with some third party who has not come forward. It would also seem probable that in the midst of her foolhardy escapade, she suffered from a sudden attack of vertigo and so fell to her death. It is therefore my duty to instruct two members of the jury to bring in a verdict in accordance with the evidence. And I hope this case may be a lesson to all on the undesirability of entering into sporting contracts which may be a danger to life and limb. I regret, as must everyone in court, that such an unfortunate accident should have visited itself on Colonel Sir Percival Girth and his family, who are already suffering from a recent bereavement. Hmm, a very intelligently reasoned explanation indeed. Don't you think so, Val? I certainly do. Of course, had it not been for Beth's father, I should have been the subject of the inquest, with a crueler coroner than Dr. Cobden moralizing on the dangers of putting strange animals into other people's stables. <laughs> Oh, uh, how are the two papas getting on, by the way? Like a house and fire. They're in the library talking archaeology. I have a hunch they're both asleep. Wonderful neighbours, aren't we? You know, this is the first time I've felt this summer that life was worth living. Me too. Mr. Campion, hmm? pardon my curiosity, but when did you know about Mrs. Shannon? From the beginning? Well, yes and no. Huh? I made some inquiries about her and found she was head over heels in debt. Oh. But I didn't know for certain till we got it from Mrs. Munsey. Well, I still don't see is why she put Mrs. Munsey on to Aunt Di. I mean, what was the point of it? Well, the point was that your Aunt Diana never let the chalice out of her sight. So the idea was to give that artist fellow a chance by staging a shock that would put your aunt to bed for a day or two. But Mrs. Munsey was too much for her. Exactly. And the whole scheme came unstuck. Well, what I don't get is how Albert came un into this in the first place. Neither do I. Don't you? Oh, visitors. Say, that's quite a car. Ah, quite a visitor, too. Why, who is it? 
That, if I'm not mistaken, is the representative of the crown. Oh. Let's see who gets out. Yes, that's him. He's come to inspect the chalice. It happens every ten years. No top hat. I haven't seen a good top hat since I came to England. Oh, very remiss. <laughs> I can assure you he's the real thing, though. That's why we stay to lunch, Beth. You'll have to have it with Albert and me in the morning room. How come? Well, it's a family ceremony. We, we mustn't disturb it. Oh. Albert, leaving aside the honourable gentleman, can we please have an answer to the question, how did you get mixed up in this? Oh, wait a minute. Here's Lug, looking very self-important. Hello, Lug. What's the trouble? Here. Yeah. See who's come? Yes, we saw. Orders is for you to nip into the house for Mr. Val and report in the library. What, me as well? And Professor Carey, that's the orders. And you in flannels. Albert, what does he want to see you for? <sighs> I thought you'd have got it a long while ago. He is my employer. Albert, well, you I... told me you were yes, only doing I this... I know I did. It was too early to explain. Come on, Val, we mustn't keep him waiting. Colonel, there's really no need for me to read all this through. Whatever you say, sir. After all, we've read it through together several times before. We have indeed. Makes one feel old. Every reading makes another decade gone. I think this one clause will be sufficient. <clears throat> and the said representative of Her Gracious Majesty or her heirs shall go up into the chamber accompanied by the master and his eldest son, providing he be of sufficient age, and they shall show him that the treasure which they hold in the stead of the crown be whole and free from blemish, that it may be known to us that they have kept their loyal and sacred trust. What about the other clause? Oh, yes, uh, this is where you come in, Campion, and you, Professor. We do. Uh, listen. Further, we also command that in times of trouble, or such days as the house of Girth may be in danger, that the master allowed two witnesses to go with them, strong men and true, sworn to keep faith and all secrecy as to the treasure and the manner of its keeping, given under our hand and seal. Well, I, I think that covers the matter, Colonel. Of course, I understand, strictly speaking, that such days as the House of Girth may be in danger are past. But I certainly agree with the Colonel that in the circumstances we might stretch a point in the uh, archaic formula. Yes, it seems the only courtesy we can extend to you both. Your tremendous assistance in this distressing affair. Ah, there's nothing I would consider a greater honor. And you, Campion? I feel just the same, sir. All right. <clears throat> the Colonel and I feel, however, that from now on we should adhere strictly to tradition. Oh, of course. The entrance to the uh, chamber is and always has been a closely guarded secret, known only to my predecessors and the Colonel's. Therefore, I feel sure I shall offend neither of you if I ask you to lend me your handkerchiefs and allow me to blindfold you until we approach the treasure. Sure. Here you are. Thank you. Now, yours, Mr. Campion? Here, sir. Thank you. Now, then, if you'll allow me, I... Hmm. Now, if you'll take Mr. Campion's arm, Val, I'll look after Professor Carey. Colonel, will you lead us? Very well. We're just coming to some spiral steps. Stop. Gentlemen, we are at the door of the chamber. Before I unlock it, let me say this. You are about to see the chalice and its guardian. The chalice is a small cup, simple and beautiful, of rubies and English red gold. Its guardian is a giant. A giant? Yes, a giant knight in black armor. He kneels at an altar with the chalice between his hands. It has rested there for centuries. Take off your bandages. We shall not disturb him. The guardian of the chalice. He is my ancestor and yours, Val. The first Messiah Girth. 
There he has knelt through the years in the full armor of the tourney, with the chalice in his safekeeping. Campion, the chalice, well, look at it, the beauty of it, small, simple. Just as you said, that gold was washed from mountain streams before the Romans came. Is he really there, inside the armor? Oh, look at the wrist, Val. Those gnarled yellow knots were once human hands. I'm not sorry the visor's down. I don't know what we might see. The colonel lowered the visor before he brought you here. He's there, all right. You feel he might move any moment. It makes me glad I never came hunting that chalice. But the size. Can he really have been? Oh, yes. There were giants in those days. If you are ready, gentlemen. Yes, yes, of course. Perhaps you would like to rest in your room till lunchtime. Will you join me? Of course. This takes a bit of getting over. Then, with your permission, when we're outside, we'll replace the blindfolds. Now let us leave Messiah Gert to his vigil. Whiskey and soda for two. The Colonel sent me up with this lot. They aren't half doing his nibs proud downstairs. You know that girl I took a fancy to? Mm -hmm. I've been helping her clean her silver all the morning. Old Branch never took his eyes off me once. I don't blame him. Now run along, Lug. Oh, you can pack my bags after lunch. We're going back to town this evening. Uh, just when I'm getting along nicely, too. Soda? Thanks. Here you are. Yeah. You finished them? Yes. They'll stick to the rules. Their agent's dead, and that's the end of it. They're connoisseurs more than criminals. I suppose they'll switch their attention to continental museums or something like that. Probably. You know, Professor, if only my precious boss down below had seen fit to tell me about the second chalice, He'd have saved us a great deal of trouble. Oh, the oath of secrecy, I guess. Oh, what a lovely, lovely thing. I may sound a bit inhuman, but when I was looking at it, I thought of all the deaths it must have cost in the last 1,500 years, and I thought to myself, it's so utterly beautiful, it's worth it. Professor? Yes? Yeah. What do you think Mrs. Shannon saw when she looked through that window? We know what she saw. Yes, but what made her shout no? Who was she talking to? What made her let go? I... I don't understand it. Oh, I think it's pretty clear. The light was shining directly onto the figure, and the head was raised directly to the window, you remember? Yes, but even so, I... I'm afraid it must have been a very shocking sight. Don't forget, the visor was up, and she saw his face. But she spoke. She spoke as if she was replying to someone. She waved as if she was fending something off. And I heard something. Something moved in that room. I swear it. What was it? Do you know? <laughs> 